Hi hobby friends, it's time to have our cake and eat it, except that cake is made from crushed skulls and congealed blood. Today we finish Azrak. Last week we painted Azrak. If you missed that, you can go watch it now with the little corner link there. I'll link this video at the end of that one too, so you can come back and finish off here later. Just don't get stuck in an endless loop. We left out Azrak as a baseless accusation against the Imperium though, and we all know that there is at least a basis for those accusations. Keeping true to the impetus to recreate Mark Gibbon's piece, we really need a backdrop for our guy. That Gibbons piece has that wonderfully ominous lime effulgence oozing and lowering in the background, so no sooner is the plinth taped than the airbrush is loaded with some green paint and I start to work on building that textured gradient. The key here is layer, layer and layer again. We're after depth and texture, so we need to take time to build those layers up. Each successive coat interacts with the one below it to create that visual complexity we're after. Quick tip, if you're looking for a simple bit of splatter, or a star field, or flying embers, or whatever, if you pull back your airbrush trigger without pushing down, you'll load the needle tip with paint. Pressing down without pulling back after that will launch that paint off of the tip in little globules rather than the usual fine mist. It's a random process, so you have to go with the flow here, but it will give you some nice splattery texture if that's what you're after. Still all a bit smooth though, this background, so next I went in with some white paint and a sponge. By alternating between the sponged on white and thin layers of transparent greens and chartreuse, I slowly built up that rich, smoky texture. Alright, that's looking good now, it's time to move on. Old As is squarely stood on a bit of H-bar in the original, so using plasticard and some careful scoring with a sharp blade, I went about building a perch for our bird of prey. Now I'm a bit of a winger when it comes to this sort of building stuff, and if I'd thought about it a bit harder I'd have done some more measurements here, but we'll get to those consequences later. Beat up the edges a bit with a blade and we're starting to come together. I'm going to get my order of operations wrong again here, I'm a little overexcited with the progress being made and I push my advantage a little too early. That is to say I'm already painting our steel, starting with a black primer and then getting grubby with some grey. It's nice to have a few different types of brush on hand for projects like this. Almost all of the time I use regular sable brushes, sized between one and one third, but every now and then the material I'm after demands something different, and that's when something like this stiff wedge brush comes out. Scratchy brush marks of increasingly light shades of grey and some splodges of rusty browns here and there, plus a few nicks and scratches, and that's the base work done for the bar. Okay, let's pull out the magic metal that baffles all the clowns, it's magnet time. First job is to get a stack of little 3x1 magnets in these handy little footholes the GW team have left for us. Super glue is all well and good, but I'm not sure I really trust it, so I also add a little supporting material in the form of milliput. Green stuff would do just as well here. Bamboo skewers, by the way, are one of my all-time favourite hobby tools. Stick a couple of chunky magnets on the underside of the plasticard H-bar and voila! A perch fit for a murderous slave of corn. This, you can see, is why it was pretty stupid of me to paint the bar when I did. I now need to paint it all over again, at least around the back, to hide the magnets. And that's not all I'll need to do either. But before we properly finish off the display base, let's get that play base underway. Here's another hobby material I love, wire mesh. It seems like this stuff is aimed at covering vents and that sort of thing, but it's also great for making fences, junk, textured flooring, and if you tease out one strand and wrap it around something round, even a pretty passable barbed wire. Today we just want to add a little texture to our walkway though. I also have these teeny tiny plastic H-bar thingies I found on our hobby website that I'd like to use. 
If any libelous scoundrel were to suggest I bought these to use as the H-bar on the plinth, mistaking the 1.6mm size for 1.6cm, well, I should be deeply hurt and offended. At any rate, I have them, and they want using, so on they are stuck. For those following along, we now have two magnets sandwiched between Plasticard, some mesh on top, and a few runs of very purposefully purchased Model H-bar. Time for some cables. If you aren't a guitarist yourself, go make friends with one and you need never be in need of modelling cable material ever again. We're going to need some motivation for our OSL on this gaming base, and I think I have the bit, I just need to find it. Time to get out the bits box. But not that one. Or that one. Or that one. Ah, here we are, this'll be it. Yes, there it is, a nice little light. Now why would it be green? Who knows? Let's call it Chaos Corruption. Like a sci-fi space warrior wielding a bow and arrow, sometimes it's not about being sensible, it's about being cool. Right, let's get the walkway on the base now, and then, what's the secret missing ingredient to take this base from okay to full-on corn? Why yes, it is indeed some skulls. Try not to go mad cleaning up mold lines, it will all be worth it for sure. A nice pile of kill trophies gets glued on and we are over the hill now I'd say. Last little bits and bats now. Let's cover some sins on that plinth base now. My slightly haphazard approach has left me with some unsightly magnet overhang, but it's nothing a few more bits can't mask. And while we're here, we might as well stick a little easter egg skull on there too. We also need to add a little texture to the bare bits of the play base, so after a quick hunt I located my ancient container of bicarbonate of soda. This stuff instantly activates superglue and dries rock hard, so it's great for adding quick texture to things. Different consistencies of glue will give slightly different results as well, so it's worth playing around with if you like your grim dark thingamajigs. And it's time to paint. Nothing groundbreaking here, just all the usual shenanigans. If you want a deeper look at painting stuff, check out just about any of my other videos. It's quite the growing collection. While I do that, I also want to give a quick but earnest thank you to all my lovely patrons over on Patreon. A smarter, better looking, wittier bunch of folk you could never find. The illustrious ranks are of course open, so check out the link if you'd like to support me in these video endeavours. And of course, likes for the like god, comments for the comment throne, there are a few ways you can show the love sans dosh. And while you're there, why not subscribe as well? I hear it's what all the best people are up to these days. Okay, enough nonsense, let's take a look at some nonsense. Mr. A, replete with backdrop, and a few touch-ups since the last time too. Really, so much fun to go all in on a chap like this, and with the support of a piece of art to follow for inspiration, an altogether quite relaxing paint job. Now, nice as this homage to the Gibbons is, I must say I do also quite like this play base as well. Azrak, alas, does not seem to have any official lore, so I'd like to imagine perhaps he's lurking on one of those Arcs of Omen we hear so much about lately. Perhaps cut off from the rest of his warband and gone mad with the lack of bodies to mutilate. Don't wander around desolate space hulks alone is all I'm saying, you never know what might be lurking around a greenlit corner. But what do you say? Which is your favourite base? Got any homebrew lore for old Azzy here yourself? Let me know in the down below, don't forget to hit the buttons and I will see you all next time.